Welcome to yet another video lecture of system design methods. We'll talk about model view controller, which is also a design pattern, but more on the level of architecture. Also, we'll talk about the observer pattern, which is often used in combination with model view controller. Now, before we dive in, I want to take a step back and talk a bit about software architecture. Wikipedia describes it as the high-level structure of a software system. A more extensive definition is given by Philip Kruchten, Grady Booch, Kurt Bittner and Rich Reitman. They view it as a set of important decisions about the organization of a software system, which includes the concepts that the system is composed of, their behavior and how they are related. Martin Fowler observes that a software architecture makes decisions that are hard to change since they guide the overall structure of a software system. So, architectural decisions are on a higher level than software design decisions. They establish how users will be using the application, web-based, on the phone, etc. Where the data is stored, how will the application be deployed and how it will be maintained. Just like design patterns, there are also architectural patterns. Architectural patterns can be based on the global components in the system or uh, how data flows, how events are handled. There are patterns such as peer-to-peer, -peer, the torrent architecture, for example, pipes or plugin systems. We don't deal with many architecture patterns in this course, but I do like to point out a common one, model view controller. It's used in applications that have a GUI, a database, and business logic. It shows that patterns occur in many levels in software design. MVC is a classic pattern that already existed before the design patterns by the Gang of Four were introduced. So, let's look at an example. Suppose that you want to create a board game. What is needed? You need to write code that handles the various moves and their restrictions. You need the graphics for displaying the board and the pieces. And you need to handle the interaction with the users, button clicks and so on. How do you assign these aspects to classes? Model view controller is a triple of components. The model is responsible for manipulating and storing the data. The view is responsible for visualizing the data. And finally, the controller is responsible for handling the user interaction. When you look at a simple client-side only website, then the model is the data in an HTML page. The view is the CSS file describing the style of all the components and how they should be displayed. The controller is your browser that handles your interactions with the web content. For an application that uses a database, the model represents the database, how it's structured, and the data that's stored in it. The view describes the GUI for entering data and displaying the results of a query. The controller defines the user interactions and translates them into queries and mutations of the model. Here's a diagram that shows how the different parts of MVC interact. The controller updates the view, and the view sends events, such as button presses, to the controller to handle. The controller then initiates operations on the model. The view, in turn, reads data from the model to display. And finally, the model reports events both directly to the view and to the controller. MVC is useful because it helps you separate the different responsibilities. This in turn helps you to more easily change or extend your application. For example, perhaps you'd like multiple views of the same data, via a website, via an app on your phone, for example, or completely different controllers, such as a controller for the end user versus a much more capable but unsafe admin environment controller. In such a system, the model is the backend and runs on a server somewhere. The view and controller 
are on the client and run as an app, website or desktop application. As an exercise, look at some previous code you wrote and see if you can find MVC structures there. How do the different parts of an MVC application communicate? This is where you often see the observer pattern appear. For example, in a webshop application, whenever a new customer registers, we want to send the customer a welcome email, verify the address using Google Maps, update the database, subscribe the customer to our newsletter, and so on. A naive solution would be to just hard code everything in the customer class. But now we're starting to lose cohesion and this gets worse every time we want to extend the functionality. Another example, in a game context. Suppose you write a mobile game that has all kinds of achievements. Who checks when you earn an achievement? You probably want to keep that separate from the main game code. But you still want to inform another part of your code that something happened in the game. You killed an enemy or you collected items how to set up the communication for this. The observer pattern allows you to notify other objects when an object changes. This is also known as the listener pattern or the pub sub model. This is what the observer pattern looks like in UML. There are two abstract classes or interfaces, the subject and the observer. The subject maintains a list of observers and notifies them via an update method that an event occurred. The idea of the observer pattern is that we need to establish a common interface for all objects, all observers that are interested. The abstract observer class does exactly that. It has an abstract method update which is called whenever something interesting happens. Each observer then defines an update method. Inside the update method you can perform the task that you need. The customer class maintains a list of observer objects. And now that you have a common interface, you can let each observer register itself. You can add two methods to the customer class for this, attach and detach. And now you can notify each observer in the customer class whenever something has changed. Here's an example of what that could look like in code. Because of the way the pattern is set up, you don't need to know anything about these observers, except that they have an update method that you should call. Sometimes, it's useful that an observer has more information about the customer. For example, if the newsletter service needs to add a new customer to the mailing list, the service needs to know the email address of that new customer. There are a few ways to achieve this. You could add a getState method to the customer class that supplies this information. You can also add the data as a parameter to the update method. But then the shape of the data becomes part of the pattern and that introduces some coupling. Another thing you might want to do is provide some information to the observer about what exactly happened. For example, new customer added or customer address updated. The observer pattern then becomes more like an event mechanism. The observer pattern is particularly useful if you don't know the exact list of observers, or maybe the list of observers may change in the future. Or perhaps you have different observers in different parts of the application and you want to change them dynamically. The only thing you need to be careful about is to make sure you don't forget to detach observers. If you forget to do this, you might accidentally break your system. For example, an observer related to a particular page in the GUI may then still get an update while the page no longer ex exists. Another thing you need to be careful about is to make sure observers are added only once. You could add a check for that in the attach method so that if you accidentally add an observer multiple times, it's still notified only a single time. 
but perhaps even better, you could raise an exception when you try to register an observer that already is registered so that the stupid developer that did this can fix the bug. So, a model, a view and a controller walk into a bar. The bartender looks up and says, is this some kind of joke? <laughs> Fortunately, we've now reached the end of the video about MVC and the observer pattern. If you have any questions, post them in the Teams channel of the course. Thanks for watching and catch you in the next one.